of power generation company Vistra are up 137% this year due to increased demand for energy in the data centers powering the AI revolution. Only two, two S&P 500 companies, Supermicro and NVIDIA, are outpacing Vistra year to date. Joining us now in an exclusive interview is Vistra CEO Jim Burke, who's here on set with us. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan, for having me. Have you been surprised by the move in the stock this year? And are investors right to be thinking about Vistra as this AI play or AI infrastructure power play? You know, I think we are always surprised when you see a move the size that we've seen. But I think it's been a long time building. For seven years, we've been growing our company with this electrification theme in mind. And so we've tripled revenues. We've tripled the earnings power. That's all before this latest wave of AI interest. So I think once we got included in the S&P 400 mid cap last fall and then in the S&P 500 this May, all of a sudden we became on a radar screen. But our people have been working at this for a long time. So you were growing even before we started talking about or started seeing this this massive AI data center build out. That being said, hyperscalers, AI startups, <laughs> NVIDIA's, are, are, are these companies that you're working with right now? It is a good chunk of my day is to have conversations with these large customers because everybody we serve, we serve nearly 5 million homes and businesses, they all have choice of provider. So they're talking to us, they're talking to other people and they need their needs met. Well, we have assets, we have 41,000 megawatts and what that means is we have enough power to power 20 million homes across the United States. So folks are coming to Fistra and they're saying, I need a large scale data center and I need power and I need it quickly. And because we're a competitive company, we can move quickly. And so we're having lots of conversations with all these biggest customers. And obviously there's plenty of work to do for everybody, but our people are really excited about this opportunity. How do you capitalize on this moment and maybe the currency of your stock right now to, to make this expand beyond the moment, whether it's through acquisitions, whether it's through spinning up new businesses in, in consulting or other areas that allow you to grow along with the AI phenomenon? Yeah, it's a great question. In fact, we just completed in March the acquisition of three nuclear sites, two in Ohio, one in Pennsylvania. So we have a, a large fleet of nuclear. We also have a very large fleet of natural gas fired units. Those are actually attracting interest as well because those are flexible units. Mm. I think what we have focused on is dispatchable power, which is the power you can turn on that meets the needs of customers when they need it. So we're always open to new acquisitions. We are always mindful, though, of the fact that you got to run a great operation. And these acquisitions come if the value is right. If the value is not right, we have a great business to run every day. And the one thing we know is electricity is essential to everyday life and people are electrifying everything. Mm. It's not simply about AI. That is the last burst of activity and whether we build organically to support it or acquire to support it or just use our existing assets will depend on the customer need. You're unique being three quarters nuclear and nat gas, mostly nat gas Correct. right now. How much, given the constraints that are out there re regulation wise, are you gonna be able to expand particularly in nuclear? Yeah, look, I think nuclear is really about how fast does the technology evolve. I think what the markets have learned over time, and, and certainly large customers understand, is 24 by 7 power is not provided by the current fleet of renewable resources. The renewables are valuable, but if you need power 24-7 and you want a low carbon or no carbon footprint, Nuclear has to be part of that equation. There's over 20 companies pursuing new technologies in nuclear, both large scale and small scale, but they've got to get through the licensing and they've got to get to a proof of concept that investors are willing to bet on that technology. I expect that if we can find the customer arrangements, particularly these large technology companies, we would love to partner with the nuclear technology companies to put a package together so that we can meet their long-term needs. So whether it's the AI build out or electrification of everything, the fact that we're coming out of a high inflation cycle that was um, that really cast a light on energy and power generation and the costs associated with that, or even just national security implications, right. you think about Russia invading Ukraine and what that did to energy prices globally. How quickly can you bring power online, whether it's nuclear or other? And have you found that there is more appetite from regulators, from governments to be able to move or work with, work with you to do it? 
There is definitely concern about how quickly can new resources come on to the electric grid. Keep in mind, though, we're retiring resources at the same time, mm -hmm. particularly coal resources. The environmental regulations are suggesting there's even more coal to retire across the country. So we not only have to meet the growth of electric demand, we have to meet the replacement of some of these resources that are currently out there. Having existing sites, we have over 80 sites already connected to the transmission system. Those are the first places to start because you can move the quickest at those sites. So if you have access to sites, you have access to water, you have land, you can bring new resources to market more quickly.